Created Equal, and uh, we're coming to you live today, and we're going to let some people jump on here, give us some time for some people to jump onto the live stream. We're going to be talking about the breaking news coming out of Washington, D.C. last night. In fact, I was sitting in front of my computer at 9 p.m. You might wonder why I was doing that, uh, because I was working, and uh, replying to email, and I get an email from Jonathan Van Maren with a link to the Politico article saying that the, a draft from Justice Alito on the majority position on uh, Rovers, or, uh, uh, the Dobbs case had been leaked to the media. So we're going to be talking about that today and what that means to uh, the movement, to the decision, and all, all, the, all those things. So we're going to be taking questions from people. Uh, if you're watching on uh, Instagram or Facebook, you can go ahead and fill out the question in the comment section. And uh, we'll try to get those questions answered. So we're going to continue to allow some people to jump in here. I'm, my guest is going to be here is Katie Short with Life Legal Defense. And um, she's going to be helping to answer some of the questions because I'm sure there are going to be a lot of them. Uh, because this is not normally how things work in Washington when it comes to the Supreme Court. This is not supposed to happen this way. So we, we want to kind of go through each one of these questions and ask them and get answers for you and and try to give us a roadmap forward uh, with the, it looks like the very probable overturning of Roe versus Wade. So once again, Mark Harrington here, I'm the president of Created Equal. I've got Katie Short on the uh, broadcast today. This is a special episode and we're gonna be talking about the, uh, the leaking of the draft document, the majority opinion by Samuel Olito that was leaked to Politico last night. So. Katie, thanks for being on the program. Thanks for having me, Mark. And I appreciate a late notice. I know that you are following this very closely. This is what you do at Life Legal Defense. And uh, we appreciate the work that you do in defending us and keeping us out of trouble, trying to keep us out of court. And <laughs> so when I was texting you last night, I was asking, you know, what do you think? What do you think? So I thought, well, we'll just have you on the air today and we'll deal with it then. So uh, this is unusual, right? Let's let's first deal with that. That uh, you know, I've been reading here and there that this is like unprecedented. That the Supreme Court would either leak or this would be some kind of a hack or whatever. This information would come out before the decision was officially handed down. Uh, do you know? And in, in your history in doing this work, have you ever seen anything like this? I have not, and it is very very unusual. And um, I, I've read some books, you know, by clerks who already sort of were pushing the limit of, you know, revealing what was going on behind closed doors. But in terms of an actual what was going on behind closed doors long after it had happened, uh, you know, but but to have a, a, an opinion come out before, uh, uh, you know, to get a peek into the deliberations and specifically a draft opinion before the final opinions released is, as far as I know, unprecedented. I know that some of the liberals, I've been watching some of their tweets and such, and they say, oh, this isn't unusual. And they cite all these cases, apparently, that there's been leaks like this. Uh, I don't think there's ever been a leak like this on a, a case that has the magnitude of the Dobbs v. Jackson. That's for certain. Uh, we don't know what happened. Uh, we assume that there was some kind of leak from within the court, probably from a li liberal justice or a clerk, possibly. Uh, at this point, I don't know whether it matters or not. It is what it is. But how does that bode for the integrity of the court? I know John Roberts and, of course, all of us want the U.S. Supreme Court, the institution, to have credibility with the American people. And the fact that apparently that these conversations and uh, were, you know, this been leaked, that this actual document, I mean, it's the it is the opinion, the draft opinion. I'm reading it last night. That's crazy okay. that someone let this out. Well, I mean, you got to understand, Mark, that this, it, I mean, is clearly, Mark, this is a first draft. And right. um, okay. interestingly, last October, I, I actually heard Justice Alito speak. He was attending a, a, an event um, and uh, there was a little question to answer. And uh, one of the questions was about to explain police the process that, that these things, opinions go through. And he did explain, um, he said, you know, we talked about the vote that's taken after the uh, the oral argument. And then at that point, the opinion is assigned to a particular justice who is in the majority. The chief justice assigns it to a, uh, one of the justices. And uh, and then as, as Justice Alito put it, he said, and then if it's assigned to you, you draft the opinion mm -hmm. and then you circulate it. 
And what you hope for is that what comes back from the justices is this is perfect. Don't change a word. But he said that rarely, rarely happens. Mm -hmm. So we really have to understand that this is a draft opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, obviously you could, if this is the majority opinion, then there may be, you know, tinkering right. around the edges, but you wouldn't expect the actual result to change. But I also think it's important to recall that along with the opinion came that this leak of the opinion came a leak of a rumor. And the rumor is that there are four other justices who are in, in agreeing with Alito yeah. on this. And, um, and that's really and the so news. I, and I think the rumor is that yeah. that is really the news. That's that the is, case, is, for sure. is as significant. Well, as yeah. So the inside baseball yeah. is in December. They they after the court was heard the case, the oral arguments, which, by the way, I saw you out front of the Supreme Court that day. Uh, they get together. They have a conference and I, they take an initial vote. Is that right? And then they assign the, the, the decision based on that vote to one of the justices. At that time, apparently John Roberts was not one of those, so it might have been assigned to Clarence Thomas because he's the senior uh, justice in the majority position, right? So did he hand it off to Alito? I know this is all speculation, but is that most likely what happened? Well, no, I mean, I don't know how you could say that John Roberts was not in the majority and then would have assigned it to Alito. I mean, he wouldn't have necessarily taken the, the opinion writing to himself. He could be in the majority and have assigned it to Alito. You're right. You're correct that if he was not in the majority, which we're assuming that he's then not it would at this point, happened. probably. Uh, I mean, that's that's the rumor. But again, you have to understand what does the majority mean here? Mm -hmm. What we have is a law, a 15 week abortion ban. And the question is, is it constitutional or is it unconstitutional? And so, you know, that that is the basic holding before the court. And so you could have six votes to say to to uh, say that the law is constitutional to overturn the Fifth Circuit decision, but not six votes or even possibly five votes to overturn Roe. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's always been our concern in this case is that is that uh, I, I don't think there's, you know, would would there be enough justices trying to find a middle ground, a something less than overturning Roe um, in terms of upholding the law? I, I only the most cockeyed uh, optimist on the other side would say that they thought that the court would actually there be five votes to actually um, gotcha. strike down. I guess just Katie Short with the Life Legal Defense. We're talking about the leak of the draft opinion, uh, majority opinion, at least at this point from Samuel Alito that was leaked to the Politico last night. And uh, we're trying to get some make some sense of all of this through all the confusion out there. And if you're interested in uh, asking Katie a question, you can do that by on our Facebook page at Created Equal. Just write the com right in the comment section your question or on our Instagram page at Created Equal Org. Uh, Katie, so let's go through a couple of these questions that I have. I asked my staff this morning to actually give me a few of these and I want to get your take. Uh, so this is not a final decision. I can answer that. What do you think will happen now? I know this is all this is speculation, but you have this draft out there. There's going to be dissents that are going to be written. Uh, do you believe that they're going to wait until the end of the term or could they rush this out because of the leak? What are your thoughts on that? Um, when you say they could rush this out again, it's, it's a matter of the dissenters, I mean, it, to the extent, well, first of all, finalizing the opinion, is there perhaps by this point that there is a final majority opinion, uh -huh. uh, but you would have dissenting opinions and they could take their time about writing those. And uh, and and again, the, the drafts get circulated and then you could have concurrences. So the dissent raises a point. So somebody wants to write a concurrence, which responds to that point. Um, there's lots of things that could, could work to slow that down. Now, um, so when you say they could rush it out, the question is, who is they at this point? Right. Um, well, I guess it's all of them. I guess that that's probably you're answering my question <laughs> that more than likely they're going to take their time and, and use the full term to get it out. That's probably they, most likely some of nine individual justices, who each, each of yeah. whom has their own uh, uh, mm -hmm. view and, and their own, um, you know, what, what they want to see happen in this case. Um, so let, let me let me ask you this: What if there is a strategy, and we don't know at this point as to why this was leaked? 
And it's almost impossible, obviously, to know. But can you conceive of any possible strategy that would work to uh, reverse the this supposed overturning of Roe versus Wade between now and, and the time they actually release the official opinion? Um, I, if there was some hope, if, if, if the, if the, if again, assuming that this is a, there was a tactical decision by someone, uh, someone, and I think we all assume that it was a tactical decision by someone on, on the pro board side and why, why it was leaked to a, to a, a left, left-leaning uh, publication. Um, and I think the, uh, perhaps that the thinking was that, uh, there would be such a, you know, yeah, we had protests and pickets outside the Supreme Court as we have had for years. And we had in December and they had, I think later on, you know, January 22nd or whatever. Um, but they, they, um, would, they thought, well, maybe now is the time, you know, if they, if they, if there was, it was confirmed, there are five votes to overturn Roe or, or we need to, we need to do something we need to, or, or there's one, one justice who's going back and forth, you know, now is the time to drop the nuclear bomb and, and really get people excited about this. I think they probably have mis miscalculated about that though. Mm -hmm. I think this will not be different in kind than they have been for 40 years, 40 to 50 years. I, I think, yeah, you'll get people outside the court. And I, I don't think they will differ that much in kind or intensity from every time the court has done anything in the pro-life direction. It's always been, <clears throat> it's the end of Western right, civilization as we know it. So uh, when it comes to the leak, is there any protocol? I mean, the rules are not written, I assume, that that this type of thing doesn't happen. Is there any repercussions for a justice or a clerk or some, someone in the court to release this kind of information to leak it. I read today that John Roberts this morning has now commissioned the marshal of the U.S. Supreme Court to look into this. What what happens in that case? What what goes on? Well, you're right. It is it is unprecedented. So I'm not. I don't really know. I mean, I I don't think I hmm. I can't imagine a justice being involved in this. Um, I really can't. I I would think it's more. I I think he more of a clerk. Um, and, uh, now do a clerks have, uh, are they, are they licensed to practice as attorneys? Are they attorneys generally or not? In other words, you know, can they be disbarred or something for this? Uh, they could, I, I mean, if they, if they violated a, 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 you know, broke a contract or an agreement that they signed, that would certainly be something that would go to their, uh, general trustworthiness and and I could that could a bar consider that uh, in in you know moral turpitude sort of thing I I don't know I mean I guess it's possible and I'm not I'm just not familiar with the rules of all 50 mm -hmm. state bars to see how much leeway they would have gotcha Kate I would think they'd be uh, I, go ahead no, I was sorry, just going to say Katie Schwartz my guest we're talking about the uh, the leak of the draft majority opinion by uh, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court, apparently, that Justice Alito has drafted the Politico release last night. Uh, so let's move on to the more practical, assuming that this is the majority position, OK, even though it might be tweaked, might be changed a little bit. Assuming that at the end of the term or somewhere between now and the end of the term, this is handed down and, and Roe is overturned. What would we be doing differently or should be doing differently if Roe falls? I guess that's the first question. And then I'm going to ask you about the things that are the, the liberals in Washington are now, you know, getting a head start working on. So what, how does this change things if Roe falls? Well, you know, one thing I think last time we spoke about this more shortly after the argument and I was, I was predicting that, that they, the pro boards would, not just accept this as the final word from the Supreme Court on on mm -hmm. abortion in the Constitution and that they would bring up other theories and uh, try to find, you know, compliant judges uh, who would go ahead. Yeah, we're going to I'm going to now you've brought this is a brand new argument and now I'm going to enjoin uh, the law based on this brand new constitutional argument. Um, one thing that this draft opinion does do is is it forecloses, for instance, probably the most likely argument is the equal protection argument that right. somehow 
abortion is. And so uh, th this opinion says, nope, that one doesn't work either. Yeah, and I was so, very, uh, as I read the decision late into the night, my eyes were beginning to glaze over. <laughs> uh, it, it seems like Justice Alito went out of his way to make clear that that isn't going to fly. Equal right. protection argument for the abortion right in the Constitution is not going to fly with the court which right. I thought was a very smart preemptive strike against those who are probably wanting to prepare a lawsuit. Like, right, right, exactly. So, and, and I think, you know, even if they could shop around and find some district court judge who would say, well, that was just dicta because that wasn't really, you know, briefed or whatever. Uh, I don't think it would survive a trip to a, a court, you know, the circuit court of appeals, you know? So, right. um, I, I was very happy to see that. And, um, and also kind of, repeatedly talking about how it is not in the constitution okay <laughs> and 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 the the laws that had been against abortion you know the, the, the fact that abortion was criminalized um you know it, in in this country had been for a long time continue to be up till the eve of roe so um it, it you know it, it was did seem to be trying to block the exit so to speak so what does um, this do? If Roe falls, some people are under the impression that abortion is illegal across the country. We all hopefully understand that's not the case. Right. How does this affect, say, for an example, a heartbeat bill in the state of Ohio that has been held up in the courts because of the Roe versus, Roe versus Wade decision? If Roe falls, what happens to a heartbeat bill generally or bills like it or trigger laws that have either going to be in, 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 put into place or are, are being um, are moving through the, the legislatures now, what typically will happen? Because I think a lot of people think that immediately like a heartbeat bill is going to go into effect the day after Roe versus Wade falls. Right. Is that right? No, I mean, you, you, you have to have the, the uh, whoever it is, the attorney general um, to, you know, go to court and move to lift the injunction and let, let the law go, go into effect. Um, and then, as I believe we also discussed before, you have to have, you know, prosecutors who are willing to enforce the law uh, and attorney general or local prosecutors, which, um, you know, it is unfortunate that at this at this time, um, the, the burden is still on the pro-life movement to get everything lined up um, to to make this actually happen. You need to have the legislature to pass the laws. You need to have the executive to enforce the laws. And you need to have a judiciary, a state judiciary, who is not going to interfere either, because we, we have seen that over and over again, where uh, state courts, state have found, you know, a constitutional right to abortion in their own state constitution on the flimsiest of grounds. So it's unlikely that we're going to see an immediate uh, enforcement of laws that have been either on the books and have been enjoined uh, or and or ones that were uh, in force prior to Roe versus Wade being handed down. Uh, let me ask. Here's a go, go ahead. Well, let me, let me ask this question. Overturning Roe. This is from our Facebook page. By the way, folks, if you you have a question, you can go to our Facebook page of Created Equal and ask it. Here's one from Ben. Overturn Roe versus Wade means we can then decide on the state level how the state defines abortion. Right or wrong? How, how the state defines Well, abortion? I guess what he probably uh, means by that is now the states have the the legal authority to to restrict to and outlaws any way they wish. Right. That that is correct. It, the, the the power returns to the states. The authority returns to the states. And um again, and in some cases, that may be directly all the way down to the people in the form of referendum or the legislature. And I, I mean, I, I think you will see very quick action in a number of states to to that they will become uh, abortion free to the extent that 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 it can be done in this day and age of you know male you know abortions for the male with abortion pills and things like that. I mean, there's right. there, there there have to be a lot of effort to I think stem that that uh, particular way to uh, flow of abortions. My guest is Katie Short with Life Legal Defense. We're talking about the leak from the uh, U.S. Supreme Court, apparently, on the uh, Justice Alito's draft of the more majority position on Dobbs v. Jackson and what that means. Assuming that uh, the court does overturn Roe v. Wade uh, eventually, officially, we're already hearing rumblings from those in Congress and in, in the White House about what they're going to do. Uh, they're talking about expanding the U.S. Supreme Court, which we call packing, 
and then removing the filibuster. Those are two things that are now on the table in order to pass what they're calling the Women's Health Protection Act, which is really just a way of trying to codify Roe versus Wade into law. Uh, do you think that that might have had something to do with this, the leak at this time, to kind of give them a little bit of a head start? You know, that's that's a very, a very interesting theory. Yeah, because if you wait till the end of June and then Congress is going up and they, you know, they, they recess in August, uh, that would be a pretty package to get in there before the midterm elections. Um, so that, that's a possibility. Um, but you also, given that this uh, bill returning has clearly been uh, easily contemplated um, since since the oral argument in December and, and, and prior to that, you know, when the court took the case to begin with, everybody knew that that row was in trouble. And so uh, would an extra eight weeks make that much of a difference to the effort? Um, you know, did, did they need did they need this to make it really, really, really real that this could happen? I, I don't know. But I, it's, it's possible. It's possible somebody, again, adjust a, a, a clerk or something at the, at the Supreme Court. Um, you know, possibly being influenced by someone on the outside. We really, really, really need to know if this is going to happen because we need to, to make our plans. That's completely possible. Well, we're already hearing about uh, the filibuster and um, this Women's Health Protection Act uh, being on the fast track now. So I guess it's time for us to start thinking what a post-Row America is going to look like. Uh, I guess I'd like to ask you, you know, we're, we want to we want to have this balance between the fact that this is not an official position or a decision of the court, but it certainly appears like Roe versus Wade is going to be overturned. Some of us, you know, like myself, I'm thinking, oh, this is certainly something we want to mark and celebrate to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. But the time is not yet for that, I assume. Right. I mean, we're marking the fact that it was leaked and what that means. But when it is handed down, assuming that it is uh, that it is overturned, how do you why how how would you go about marking that and and giving people suggestions on to uh, how to to treat this decision once it is handed down? Because I think a lot of people want to celebrate prematurely. Well, I think we do. One of the things that um, Alito, this draft opinion says is this far and no further in a, in a certain, in a couple of respects. Uh, one is in terms of abortion itself, like the constitution is silent, you know, uh, on abortion. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, uh, you know, is this, is this, uh, are we on the way to a actual finding that, that, uh, or an actual holding that abortion itself is contrary to the constitution. You certainly don't see that in this, in the draft opinion. Right. Um, the second, and the second thing is, just as far as other, I mean, uh, Justice Lito also goes out of his way to say, and by the way, we're not touching a lot of our other crazy decisions either, you know, uh, gay marriage and uh, most, you know, all, all these other uh, decisions that they come down, which are on equally shaky ground. Uh, but he says, no, 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 we're not, we're not going there either. Um, we are just undoing this one egregious wrong. Um, so I guess that's, that's where you would have to, I mean, that's what the celebration would be is that an egregious wrong has right. finally been righted. And, and, and with that limitation, you know, we are back, we are back to not where we were, but where we, we are back to a point where we can, uh, you know, at least fight on a level playing field, a somewhat level playing field. Right. So I know you live in the state of California and your legislature, I, I don't recall whether it passed it or not, but here's a question from Kel, Kelly Jean. She says, or he, I'm not certain, who knows, uh, if Roe versus Wade were overturned, how would that potentially affect uh, the AP Bill 2223 out of California and the other states seeking to legalize infanticide? Unfortunately, it will simply incentivize those efforts um, because the uh, what we see, yes, what we're seeing seeing in California is a full out, full blown effort to expand, promote, fund, uh, uh, sanctify right. <laughs> abortion 
Um, and so, uh, you know, and if anything, to, to the extent it even needed a, a boost, uh, but it, with a with a legislature that is uh, a super majority of pro uh, pro abortion legislators, you don't really need the boost. But this it will give them a talking point, a reason to look like you know heroes among their their right. And if you look at the map that uh, I've been using for months now, was put out by the Center for Reproductive Rights that shows the abortion free states and the abortion havens and there's a big d expanse between them we call them abortion deserts uh, you're gonna have california you're gonna have oregon and washington on one coast and then you're gonna have the northeast on the other side of things mostly with a couple of states in between like illinois new mexico where you basically have an abortion up until the very moment of birth so that's going to be the new landscape, assuming that this is um, this decision is what it is. And we're overturning Roe versus Wade. Uh, ben asks, uh, would we anticipate a lot of the movement uh, people leaving states depending on how their state defines or handles abortion? What do you what do you think of that? Do you think there'll be Californians that will lose leave California or people that will move to California based on their <laughs> political persuasion or pro-life position? What are your thoughts? Um, I, I can't see a lot of movement. I mean, people are leaving California because, uh, but a lot it, of it was other not, reasons. <laughs> yeah, a lot of other reasons that are much more likely to affect their everyday life, uh, schools, uh, uh, you know, business, you know, anti-discrimination laws and businesses that say you must hire, you, you basically you have to treat, uh, you know, men as women, women as men, speak to them that way. You know, there's a lot more reasons that are going to affect people in their everyday life than the fact that there is an abortion clinic, you know, operating down the street. But I, but I would like to, to kind of send a message to any of your listeners who are in the, you know, particularly the southeastern part of California. If you, if you look at that map um, where we expect to see uh, where you would expect to see women traveling to California, unless they're flying in, would be, you know, coming mm -hmm. from Arizona. And uh, speaking of abortion, speaking of deserts, it's yeah, desert down desert. there, but it would be a place, <laughs> yeah. And and it would, but um, we expect to see that there will be efforts to uh, make sure that women don't have to travel 200 miles across the desert. They'll set up clinics and things so they, they just hop across the border, as, you know, as reasonably as they can, you know, get close to the Arizona border as possible. So those people there in, you know, Imperial County, San Bernardino County, you know, keep an eye out uh, for plans to open up new clinics or expand existing clinics. So in if your you have a area. question or comment, you can uh, enter that into the uh, comment quest or a section of our Facebook page at Created Equal. Uh, for Katie, we're talking about the uh, leaked uh, opinion by Justice Alito to Politico on the overturning of Roe versus Wade in the Dobbs v. Jackson case. Uh, I'm going to ask you to now even deep, more deeply gaze into your crystal ball and go beyond what we know the Biden administration is going to do and the majorities in the House, for sure, and Senate are going to attempt to do. And there are other things that the federal government can attempt. Uh, one is, I think the FDA may even go further with the abortion pill. They've already removed restrictions that limit uh, the abortion pill's use uh, as far as requiring a, a in-person uh, meeting with the physician, and now you can do it over telemed. Do you see that as a possible move, that maybe they would restrict states who are passing legislation right now to restrict the abortion pill. Do you think that the federal government might try to keep states from doing that? I, I think that they will certainly be looking for ways to do that. But um, again, without the backstop of a federal court, you know, the, the right to abortion. I mean, because for instance, you had in, you, you've had challenges to, I remember a case in Oklahoma and, I'm sure there have been others where straight states have said basically all they said was we're going to we're going to follow the FDA rules, which were actually stricter than what abortion clinics were doing. And and a court struck that down as as because it was too restrictive on the constitutional right to abortion. But I don't know what sort of hook they would have um, to be able to say, you, you, you know, to uh, invalidate state laws that are are more restrictive than what the federal government chooses to do. For instance, you know, states are allowed to, um, 
uh, you know, you, if they wanted to ban smoking, you know, below the age of 25, they probably could. So, mm -hmm. you know, or buying cigarettes. So um, I, I, I don't think that they could do that. They might link, try to link it to funding, though. That that would be a, a, a hammer that they could try to Well, use. I think it was at least interesting this morning to see the Biden administration's reaction to this. They said that they were going to look to congressional remedies for the abortion uh, issue. And they were, I, I expected them almost to come out and say, we don't recognize the legit legitimacy of the decision, assuming it is what it is, or saying that this court is rogue. I, I really was shocked to the, to see that they're say basically assuming or uh, uh, going ahead with the notion that this is reality and they're planning for the future on a legislative level, uh, because they have said things about the court in the past on other issues when they don't agree with them and basically ignored them. So I, I was really surprised to see that they didn't come out really strongly and just say, this is illegit. We need to expand the court. Here's is a good reason for it. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I think, I think where they've, uh, you know, question the legitimacy of a federal court decision is where the federal court decision impinges on federal, on uh, some sort of federal government action. Um, whereas here, it, this is the court stepping back and saying states are permitted to regulate and restrict abortion. And so mm -hmm. the federal government is not in a position, you know, they, they, they can say we don't recognize the legitimacy of, of this, decision, but the states, states themselves certainly do. Right. And they will, they are the ones who would be, you know, uh, closing down abortion clinics and, and finding, you know, uh, penalizing abortion providers. Um, but I, I mean, I agree that they aren't at least pretending that we are going to put, you know, the, the entire, you know, every branch of the federal, I mean, every branch of the executive branch, every agency onto, you know, look for ways to. Which is what they kind of did I, in I the Texas that, heartbeat that, case as well. I mean, they were they were putting every resource right. they could to try to turn that one around. You know, one thing that drove me crazy as I was looking through some of the comments were some pro-lifers assuring other pro-choice people that abortion's still legal. It's like, <laughs> oh, don't worry, you know, Roe versus Wade is overturned, but you can still get your abortion. Uh, you know, I, I guess that's yeah. true to a certain degree, but it, it, I don't think that's a position we want to take. We want to say this reversed an egregious wrong. Uh, that is Roe versus Wade. And now it's up to the state legislatures to fix it once and for all, rather than saying, oh, no, you can go to, you know, Illinois or California. Right. <laughs> right. A, a terrible talking point. But I saw that out there. I think we're just so worried that we're going to be painted as extremists other than taking the high ground. I was very impressed by Alito's argument, too. I mean, it's very strong. I felt very encouraged that. There are still men and women in the country that believe in the rule of law and are willing to take courageous action to defend the unborn. I was it came to tears as I'm reading this thing. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah and I think uh, what the opinion does is because Roe was just made of whole cloth and the Alito decision comes along and says, you know, wait, no, there is no constitutional basis. That that's been one. That has been the, the sort of the high ground of the pro-abortion movement. We're defending the mm -hmm. constitution. Yeah, we're defending. You know, women, women can strip their constitutional right to have an abortion. And, you know, and he just rips the, the 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 veil away and said, no, there was there was never a constitutional right to have mm -hmm. abortion. But wait a minute, your legislatures, but don't try to make this. You know, hide behind the constitution doing this. Yeah, one thing, uh, one of the benefits of Roe versus Wade being overturned, assuming that it will be, is it takes away the argument from pro-lifers and pro-choicers alike that this is a constitutional right. There, there are pro-lifers that have always worked within the confines of Roe v. Wade, which is somewhat understandable, knowing that every law they pass and signed by the governor ended up being caught up in court. I get that. But no longer will that be an excuse as to do why to do the right thing in your state legislature, because Roe versus Wade is now no longer an impediment for pro-lifers. And as mm -hmm. you say, pro-choicers can no longer put all their eggs in that one basket that it's a so-called constitutional right. Uh, it's going to be nice not to hear that on college campuses. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that much. Right. I mean, that's going right. to be a, right. a relief. So it removes that 
uh, impediment, if you will, or a talking point, if, if nothing else, that this is somehow a constitutional right. It's found in the Constitution. That is no longer going to be the case, assuming this is the decision. Right, right. Yeah, it's no longer... It, it no longer has that, you know, sacramental quality of mm -hmm. and, and that and that, um, you know, no, it, it's just it's another political battle. And you may, you know, right. some of us think it's more important than others, but it's just another political battle to be fought. So let's uh, finish without, up here. Without, if you have any, any more questions, you can go to our Facebook qu uh, page and, and ask them. Or if you have a comment, go to Create Equals Facebook page. Uh, Katie, I want to just finally ask you this question. There are those that say that we should never recognize Roe versus Wade. We should defy the law or, or the ruling. Uh, and, and now that it's out of the way, I wonder what argument they might have. Uh, but it's still true that the federal courts will have a part to play in, abor in abortion jurisprudence going forward, right? What would that look like? Now that Roe's out of the way, assuming... What would it look like for the role of the courts? I, I think it's going to be very minimal. I mean, Alito addressed that at the, at the end of this draft opinion. He said, okay, so what is the new standard? And the new standard is rational basis. And it's, a, you know, can does the government have a rational basis for this law? Uh, and a rational basis can include protection of prenatal life. And so I, um, I don't see, um, you know, y y it would be the well, abortion now the regulation standard is would Dobbs, be, uh, right? Uh, I mean, now, now the federal standard is Dobbs, right? Every, every abortion oh, law yeah, I mean, it's is gonna, now going yeah, to be lined up against Dobbs v. Jackson, right? Oh yeah, and, and that's the thing, and 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 that case says, you know, if as long as it's rational, they will have to they will have to come up with the they would have to in federal court come up with the argument that it isn't even a rational restriction, and um and that the, or that the government has no rational basis for this. And again, understanding that protection of unborn life is a rational basis, and so it would I I don't even know what what a restriction would would look like that could not meet that. I guess test. we're going to find out. My guest is uh, Katie Short with Life Legal Defense uh, Foundation. We're talking about the decision, or at least the, the, the I don't want to get ahead of myself here, the uh, opinion written by uh, Justice Alito that was a leak to the Politico last night. Uh, Katie, I want to wrap this up. If Roe is overturned, we're in a post-Roe America. That changes many things, of course, Legislatively, we know it goes back to the state legislatures, but now we need to be able to uh, help the women that are in that situation, just like now, but even more so, who are facing a, a pregnancy, unwanted, if you, if you want to put it that way, and looking for answers. Uh, we need to up our game, don't we? I, I think we do. I mean, I mean the, the pro-life movement has done a tremendous amount uh, to help uh, women facing unplanned pregnancies and crisis pregnancies, and you know, certainly wouldn't want to to you know basically show the pro boards were saying, oh, they never cared cared about women anyway, and have all those pregnancy care centers just mm -hmm. shut down overnight. No, I mean, I, I think there will always be there's there is a need for that. And um, and probably a greater there will be a greater need when abortion is not available to help support those women, and that this is a chance for the pro life movement to show that that they yes they have always been sincere in their desire to help. I women. agree, and folks, I just want to exhort you. This is not an official decision of the U.S. Supreme Court. This is only a draft of a majority opinion by one of the justices. Uh, we don't want to celebrate. There will be a time for that, at least at some level. Uh, but this is the time to get serious about our efforts uh, to end abortion altogether and provide the resources to parents who are considering abortion. And um, some of the things we're looking at doing here is to be able to uh, employ some of our resources in states where we have a really good chance of pushing over the finish line some of these laws that have been in on the books but upheld, are uh, held up, uh, maybe trigger laws, stuff like that. So we're going to be uh, unveiling other actions as things progress over the next months uh, after the road after this decision is handed down. 
We're also raising money currently to uh, purchase an ultrasound van that we can deploy kind of in a, a, a mobile ultrasound. It might be stationed at border states to states that have outlawed abortion because parents are going to be traveling across state lines more than likely to have abortions. We want to be able to be in a position to influence them and help them to change their minds and not kill their babies. So there's things that we're doing here at Created Equal. It's not time to uh, lay down our, our, our arms here. It's time to recommit ourselves to the fight. Uh, it's just begun. I've been at this for 30 years, and I really honestly didn't know I would ever see this day. And, and as a final note, we have to thank Donald Trump for putting three justices on the Supreme Court. The pro-life movement had something to do with that, no question. But who would have thunk Donald Trump, of all people, will be go, go down in the history books possibly as the man who put the justices on the Supreme Court to reverse the most egregious decision in the United States Supreme Court history. So uh, those who people who are never Trumpers, if you're not, if you haven't come on side of the president, former president, this is the time to do it because this is big, big, big news coming out of Washington. Katie, thanks for being on the show today. Thanks for having me, Mark. All right. This momentous uh, outcome, it looks like, at the U.S. Supreme Court, where it looks like they're going to be overturning Roe versus Wade. We'll see you next time. God bless you. God bless America. And remember America to bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist. For more information on how to make a difference for the cause of life, liberty, and justice, go to createdequal.org. To follow Mark, go to markharringtonshow.com. Be sure to tune in next time for your marching orders in the culture war.